He realized that since 9-11, the only person to have been held accountable and fired because of this is me. <laughs> How about the judgment on 9-11 to keep reading to school children? when you are told the country is under attack. I mean, talk about being nonpartisan. How much of a partisan pretzel do you have to twist yourself into to work backwards to, yes, when, some, when a president is told that the country is under attack, the proper thing to do is to freeze, to choke, to sit there like Forrest Gump. Really, that takes a lot of working backwards to that. Because, you know, it's not like we live in the nuclear age. Oh, wait, we do live in the nuclear age. In fact, Bush and his buddy, Mr. Blair, sold this war partly by telling us that Saddam Hussein could reach us with his nuclear weapons, which he didn't have, in 45 minutes. 45 minutes! But seven, to sit there while your piss dries, that's okay. <laughs> you know, seven minutes is a long time in the nuclear age. This is not 1780. <laughs> so, I, you know, I know Republicans pride themselves on being loyal, and they are. But loyal to what? To a person? or to a principle. Because if you defend a president for sitting there for even one second after he's told America is under attack, you are loyal to a person more than you are to the truth, to a principle, or to your country. You know, <laughs> if you defend that, you have drunk the Kool-Aid. You are part of a cult. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I don't know how marijuana, the, the one drug that never killed anybody, got to be the demon seed. It's just amazing. It's such a triumph of negative marketing. And it's funny because the far right, the Christian right, they're the ones who are usually so against drug use of any kind. And it's very hard for me to picture Jesus Christ walking up to a medical marijuana patient and going, up, 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 let me take that, my friend. <laughs> that's a slippery slope right there. I'm sorry. That's, that's a very bad message to kids. Now, good luck with your bone marrow cancer. Because, <laughs> you know... It's always a slippery slope to kids. That's, you can get them all, you always get the voter on that one, you know? It doesn't seem like an adult twisting up a fatty to watch Nick at Night is doing any harm, but that's a slippery slope to your kids blowing people behind dumpsters to make money for their heroin habit. My opponent wants your children blowing people. The fact that somebody like Rush Limbaugh, who has made a career preaching that anybody who does drugs has got to go right to jail, do not pass go, no questions asked, right to jail, gets caught doing 30 Oxycontin a day. 30 Oxycontin? Do you have any idea how high that is? I don't, and I've been pretty high. <laughs> But, <laughs> wow, 30 Oxycontin. This guy is putting up Elvis numbers, ladies and gentlemen. But how does he get away with it? They say, well, he's on medication. Oh, see, that's not drugs. Oh, no, that's medication. Well, you know what, pal? We all got our medication, don't we? They can have an ad on TV that said, ask your doctor if Jack Daniels is right for you. <laughs> and it would not be out of place thematically. And I guess if I have any theme here tonight, it would be that this is just 
legislating taste and there's nothing that bothers me more than that and it's what we do all the time in this country we legislate taste there is nothing about preferring the high of oxycontin that makes you morally superior to someone who prefers the high of pot or mushrooms or crack and believe me <laughs> somebody's still doing crack you know it's you gotta love that and honestly, if you are, as Mr. Limbaugh was, exchanging in a parking lot cigar boxes full of cash for cigar boxes full of pills, oh, you are a crack addict, okay? I mean, this guy... This guy was so on the pipe, he was making his maid score his drugs for him. How's that for morals and values? You got to say that about the Republicans. They are kind of hard on the help. <laughs> My friend uh, Ann Coulter tells me all the time. Oh, I know. I know. I know, but she's very different when she's coming. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. I'm kidding. Uh, no. <laughs> Thank you. But... Uh, but she always uh, says liberals have joyless sex, and it reminds me that uh, in addition to a war on drugs that we never stopped after 9-11, we also still have a war on sex. Before he we left office, Ashcroft passed down an in indictment against the porn industry. Uh, he named five videos. I'm going to tell you one of the titles, not because I want a cheap laugh, but because I want you to understand where your tax dollar is going. One of the titles was, A Thousand and One Ways to Eat My Jizz. <laughs> Apparently Ashcroft was okay with the first 999, but the last two just set him off. He was, that is no way to eat jizz. He, and, you know, believe it or not, here's something I have in common with John Ashcroft, which is that I don't really also have any desire to watch movies about people eating jizz. <laughs> the difference is I don't ask that you legislate my taste. I don't ask that my opinion be made into the law. You know, If it's your opinion that beer is a better drug than pot, well, you're wrong, but, you know, I respect that. I mean, I don't actually respect it, but I, I let you have it, it, whatever. If it's your opinion that having children is the greatest thing a person can do, God bless you, many people would agree with you, but again, it is still only an opinion, and there shouldn't be a prejudice against single people, and there certainly is in the workplace, single people know, when the family guy... When the family guy needs some time off, it's always, you know, go ahead, Bob. You got twins in the school play. What if I have twins in the jacuzzi? <laughs> huh? <laughs> but we do it all the time. We legislate taste. We do it with the tax code. Churches and children get a tax break because it's, all, it's assumed that we all agree that we want to encourage churches and children. I don't. I don't. That's my opinion. I don't want to encourage either churches or children, and it's a very bad idea to put them together. In fact, if I had to give one bit of advice to kids, I would say this. Kids never have sex with a priest. No, I'm not kidding. Because when you have sex with a priest, you're not just having sex with that priest. You're having sex with every kid that priest had sex with for the last 10 years. And that could be a lot of kids. Because they transfer them from diocese to diocese. You don't know where these kids have been. I'm just saying. <laughs> when you send your kid to mass, put a condom in his pocket. Put a condom. Children's safety. That's what it's all about. Come on. Nothing's more important than children's safety. Got you there. <laughs> <laughs> and
And, you know, and on the abortion issue, let me just say this. I'm, not, I'm certainly pro-choice, but I understand.